The other thing um, on, on outside broadcast was rigging the cameras, which you can imagine it's quite a lump. But it was normally carried, you can either get four people, it had handles that came out the side, front, um, and I see the way. Front and rear, both sides. Not rigged, both sides. But as you appreciate, when you take the lens out, uh, all the gubbins, the, the technology of the camera, the tubes, the, the block, are all up this end. So this end was twice as heavy as that end. And they were uh, rigging in OBs, the, these would be carried up flights of stairs, um, dumped in lifts, carried on trolleys. Uh, on a, a race metering or a football match, they would be there was a lifting bag, a frame that, that clipped onto here, and they'd be hoisted up on blocks and tackles um, in a very quite a crude manner. You got used to it, you know. It was what you had to do. You know, the lens. You'd, you'd take the lens take out. The lens, the lens out, would be in a box yeah. separately. So everything was was boxed apart from the cameras. The cameras lived in. Uh, the, the, there was the scanner obviously but you had a, a, a cable tender that had all the heavy cable gear in it and then you had what was known as the camera van later known as the technical support vehicle but we always knew it was the camera van and it had side lockers in the side and a tray pulled out and the four cameras that were on your unit lived in those four side lockers so between shows they were bumped up and down the m1 or wherever we were going um and it's a you know they were not designed for outside broadcast really they were a studio camera and they, they had a hard life on OBs. I mean, they, they were bashed around the country, they got wet, they got cold, very cold or very hot. Um, but generally, they, they worked pretty well. You know, they, we had problems, but um, you normally fixed it. If they didn't work, then you had boxes of spare boards. I mean, um, as you, you know, these, there's, there's lots of stuff in here. All these boards slide out. Um, so you can you'd have spare sets of boards, but you had a, go, a good supply of spare boards that you and you do it by process of um, fault finding, you know, logical fault finding. That it, it, if you if you got up and the camera didn't work, it could be the ca the fault on the camera. It could be a faulty cable, and these cables are, again the G101, which is a massive cable that had 101 connectors in it, with mains and all sorts of stuff going up it. Um, were prone to, you know, they, they were rigged through fields, was dirt, uh, it could pour with rain, they got wet. And the, the biggest problems were cables, you know, and, and um, so the fault could be the camera, it could be the cable, or it could be something in the truck. And that was often a cause of much discussion. The engineers would come out and say, it's not working, we think, change the cable. So you speak to the riggers and say, can we change the cable? And they'd say, oh, we did that last time and it wasn't the cable, it was the camera, you know, bring the camera back and test it so there was discussion about where you went but there was it could be time con very time consuming but you had a lot more time there was much more lead time in rigging because you had more problems to deal with now get a camera out of the box switch it on and 10 minutes later you could record something and get decent pictures on it that's the difference